Hey, my name is Amas, and if you want to create the same commercial at your home with the lowest level of equipment and tools, watch the rest of this video. So first, let me give you an insight that why they even create this commercial at first place. Then I'm going to break down the commercial shot by shot, and I'm going to tell you that how did I manage to create each one. So first, let's just talk about that. Why did I even create this commercial at all? To answer that, we need to go back for a few weeks. That I was doing a scrolling on TikTok that I just saw some college students were trying to make commercials for their homework and I was just like can I create one by myself me that I haven't gone to college for stuff like that so what I did was to open YouTube and search how to make a commercial at home that's when I saw Daniel Schiffer's videos and if I was 70% sure that I want to create a commercial after seeing his videos I was 100% sure that I want to try creating one so if you haven't seen his videos yet I highly recommend you to check out his content so for my first try at creating a commercial, I wanted things to be a bit easier for me. So what I did was to pick up one of his videos and try to recreate it as best as I can. And the reason behind this tutorial is that I'm going to do it with lower budgets. For example, I don't have any phone for my backgrounds. It's just a green screen. And for the lighting of my scene, I didn't have any lighting equipment and I was just using the windows in the room. So without further talking, let's jump into the breakdown of the shots. Now let's just talk about the first shot. The technique used to create this shot is stop motion. Actually it's just six different pictures that are all put together to create this shot. So first thing that you want to do is to find any flat surface that you don't think would look good for your background. For me it's the flat surface on my table. It was white and I was just thinking that it may look cool for my background. And after seeing some results I was happy with that and I just decided to go on with that. Second thing that you want to do is to turn on the grid on your camera. Whether it's your phone, your DSLR or mirrorless camera you want to turn on the grid so this way you can place the serials in the right place more easily. So a third thing that you don't want to do is mess up with the lighting of your scene and change the color of the background. For me that I didn't have any lighting equipment and tools and I was just using the normal source light of my room to lighten up my background. It was pretty easy to put my own shadows on the table and change the color of that background. Right now I'm creating another shot of the commercial and I just wanted to show you the windows that I'm using to light up my scene. And there are a ton of windows right here and I'm not sure that it's just beneficial right now because maybe you can even see the reflection of them in my glasses and I have the same problem with the serial box and I have to fix the reflection of the windows by moving the camera up and down but just let me show you the number of windows I guess maybe six or seven windows is just right here and you don't have to have this number of windows to light up your scene. Maybe one or two is even better. So for this shot, I brought an install, find an S screw, and then use some glue for sticking that S screw on the flat surface of that S tool. So this way I can put the box on top of that S screw and rotate it around. So obviously this flat surface is not suitable for creating commerce. That's why I just brought this white paper. I made a hole in the center of that. I'm just gonna put it on top of this. This here, this is not gonna be visible uh, when I just put the camera in the correct position. And for the box, I just made a hole at the bottom of that as well and I'm just gonna put it on top of this. One more thing that you don't want your box to be empty because it's just so loose and it doesn't rotate so good. So I'm gonna add some cereal inside the box and make the rotation of that a bit more interesting. This is how the raw footage looks like and this is the final result. So now let's go for the next shot. So for this shot there is actually nothing so much special about that. You just place your camera at the top of the box and then you just open the plastic bag of the cereal. Then you have something like this and to remove those red dark tapes you have to desaturate the red color in those areas. So there is one more thing that I want to talk about and that's the transition between these two. For this you gotta bring your footage into After Effects and using mask you gotta track the plastic bag just opening up just like this. And as you may notice the opacity of the surrounding is just increasing as the box is opening up. And for the box tearing up effect you gotta duplicate your background and have a part for top and one for bottom and adding keyframes to the rotation and position as the plastic bag is just opening up you gotta move them and rotate them into opposite direction and that's it. 
So now let's just talk about the most complex shot. I mean the one that box flying and the cereals are just coming out. I cannot say that I'm fascinated by the way that it looks, but after the problems and struggles that I had to create this one, I just love the way that how it turned out. Actually, I had to retake some of the footage multiple times just to get the one footage that I can just work with. So let's just jump into it. This shot is created by three different separate layers the background, the box, and the cereals. Let's just talk about the two footage that we need to create this shot. First, let's talk about the box footage. For that, I duct taped the box to my tripod stand, so this way I can rotate it around. And because I no longer had the tripod available, I used the gimbal stand and the stool that I showed you in previous shot to place my camera into correct position. Also, it's better to film it at higher frame rates, like 60 or 120, so in case you wanted to slow it down, you have that additional Frame. Now let's just talk about the flying cereals footage. For this let me just show you behind the scene. As you can see, I put the cereals on a tray and just threw them above and I just repeated this multiple times until I get the result that I just like. And again, you want to shoot in a higher frame rate, like 120 or maybe even more. Because you have to slow it down multiple times and you don't want to have blurry cereals. And after merging these shots, you have something like this. Now that we are all done, let's watch the commercial once again. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget to like the video and if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do that as well. Thanks for watching, see you.